Welcome to my talk on the link between morphogenesis and texture development in molluscan shells. My name is Dana Zöllner and I'm from the University of Magdeburg. Although this work is actually part of my research activity at the Technical University of Dresden together with Elke Reich and Igor Slotnikov. Of course, this is not solely our work. Hence, we would like to thank our collaborators for their profound help. But what is our research about? Molluscan shells are not only beautiful, but also a model system to study the fundamental principles of biomineralization and biomineral morphogenesis. These shells consist of structurally complex mineral organic composite ultrastructures, which are made of calcium carbonate and are arranged in layers parallel to the outer surface of the shell. Each layer exhibits a distinct three-dimensional architecture that is composed of mineral building blocks joined together by an organic membrane. The deposition of shell material, that is the growth of the shell in thickness, proceeds on a purely organic layer termed periostracum, which covers the outer surface of the shell and serves as a template for the biomineralization process. The various shell ultrastructures are formed sequentially at the interface between the mantle tissue and the inner surface of the shell. The former provides all the necessary organic and inorganic precursors for the various structures to form. Hence, it sets the thermodynamic boundary conditions for self-assembly to happen. Although the shells of different mollusk species exhibit a combination of a number of ultrastructures, the general anatomy and the process of shell mineralization are similar in all animals. In particular, the prismatic ultrastructure is a relatively simple biocomposite assembly that is composed of elongated crystalline columns bonded together by an organic interprismatic membrane. Such columnar structures are known from nature on different scales, for example on the macro scale in the shape of basalt columns. But, as already mentioned, such a structure is also not unique to one particular mollusk. As you can see here, a prismatic ultrastructure was found in these three studied species from the Pinidae family, Atrina vexillum, Atrina rigida and Pinna nobilis. Now, the first question when we look at those columns is, what does the structure look like in sections perpendicular to the growth direction? And the result is really interesting. It looks exactly like polyhedral microstructures in metals, alloys or even soap foam. And we know from material science that we have multiple ways of analysis. However, the second question then is, does it matter where we do the sectioning? To answer this question, we went to the beamline ID19 of the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility and used microtomography and a stacking procedure to obtain 3D data. What we can see here is that during the early growth, there are more crystals and smaller crystals than later on. But this sounds exactly like classical coarsening as in grain growth in metals or alloys. Hence, the microstructural evolution can be analyzed now by using various coarsening laws. However, as I will not have too much time, I want to focus on two things. Firstly, the average growth law describing the increase of the average crystal size. And secondly, the von neumann mullins law describing the size change of the individual crystals. Hence, the microtomography data were used to follow and compare the structural evolution of the prismatic ultrastructures in the three studied shells. In all analysis, assuming a constant rate of growth of the shells, a linear correlation between time and thickness of the prismatic layer was considered. Therefore, when presenting the obtained results, the temporal parameter t from grain growth 
is substituted by the growth direction z. In fact, the growth of the prismatic layer is simply treated as a two-dimensional process in which the 2D tomographic sections taken perpendicular to the growth direction at different locations present the different stages of the structural formation. So let's start with the average growth law. Written in this classic shape, we can see that the average linear crystal or grain size, r mean, increases with time, or in our case with the growth direction where b is a growth factor and n the growth exponent. For Atrina vexillum, we observe that the average size increases as a square root law in growth direction. This is really interesting as a square root law can also be observed for normal grain growth, respectively ideal coarsening. But what about the other two shells? For them, the average size increases as a linear function of growth direction. In metals, such a growth law is known to exist for triple junction controlled grain growth. Now the question arises whether this relates in any way to the size change of the individual crystals. To that aim, we can analyze the von neumann mullins law, which yields for Atrina vexillum indeed a linear relation between area change rate and number of edges. This is in agreement with the square root law regarding the average grain size. In contrast, the linear average growth law, as seen for the other two shells, yields a dependence of the rate of change on 1 over the number of edges, which we can observe here indeed for Atrina rigida and Pinna nobilis. So the three studied species from the Pinidae family show indeed different but consistent coarsening kinetics. Now, our final question for today is how do these gross kinetics relate to the texture? Using X-ray diffraction, we have analyzed the degree of preferred orientation in the prismatic ultrastructures. Please note that in calcite, the 006 reflection is the first permitted one from the 001 planes, while the 104 reflection has the highest intensity in random powder. Therefore, the intensity ratio was used for calculating the degree of preferred orientation. Examples of diffraction patterns taken from the prismatic layer in Atrina vexillum are presented here. During the initial stages of formation of the prismatic layer, we can see here the 104 and the 006 diffraction peaks have nearly equal intensities. At final stages, only the 006 diffraction peak is present. This suggests a much higher degree of preferred orientation. As a result, the development of preferred orientation in the three shells along the direction of growth is summarized here. It is evident that Atrina rigida and Pinna nobilis, the two shells that show a linear growth law, reveal practically a constant degree of preferred orientation throughout the entire thickness of the prismatic layer. Whereas in contrast, preferred orientation in Atrina vexillum evolves gradually during growth. These results, obtained by X-ray diffraction, were verified using EBSD measurements. In each shell, two cross-sections taken perpendicular to the direction of growth, one at the initial stage and one at the final stage of the prismatic layer formation, were analyzed. The obtained data for all three shells are shown here. The prisms in EBSD maps of the initial and final stages are color-coded to display the absolute misorientation angle between the c-axis of calcite, that is the 001 crystallographic direction, and the direction of growth. Every EBSD map is accompanied by a corresponding color-coded 001 pole figure. The EBSD data that you can see here fully support the X-ray diffraction measurements. The majority of prisms in all species at all stages of growth have their crystallographic c-axis nearly co-aligned with the direction of growth. However, 
only in Atrina Vexillum the existence of prisms with a relatively large misorientation angle at initial stages of the prismatic layer formation suggests an overall lower preferred orientation than at the final stages. This observation is reinforced by the corresponding pole figures. In contrast, EBSD maps and corresponding angular spreads in pole figures taken from Atrina rigida and Pena nobilis suggest more homogeneous and higher levels of crystallographic texture throughout the entire thickness of both shells. Now, what can we conclude? Whereas the prismatic layers in the three studied species from the Pinidae family show similar structural characteristics, a detailed analysis of their morphological and textural evolution reveals fundamental physical differences in the process of their formation. In particular, each shell demonstrates unique and analytically well-defined growth kinetics and a corresponding topological behavior. However, Besides the universality of structural topology in all the three shells, no exclusive correlation between the phylogeny of the studied species and the physical parameters describing the formation of the prismatic layer was established yet. So, this study raises a number of questions that are pivotal to our understanding of molluscan shell biomineralization. For example, what is the significance of the species-specific growth kinetics and how is it being regulated by the organism, the animal? How do the organisms control the initial crystallography of the nucleating mineral units? And finally, how are the textural evolution and the morphological evolution linked? For further reading, we would like to point out some references. And with that, we acknowledge the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility for beam time allocation at beam time ID19 and we thank our collaborators for their help. Finally, we like to thank all of you for your kind attention and the conference organizers for enabling this unusual conference.